Welcome back to the third video in this series um, relating to hardware topic 3 from the IGCSE computer science that supports Cambridge's new syllabus for 2023 to 2025. We're going to be focusing primarily on embedded systems. As you can see here we're still in the computer architecture but we've moved on and we're doing the final bit in, in, in this. Of course we'll then go on to inputs and output devices, data storage and network hardware. Okay, so what is an embedded system? Well, as well as general purpose computers, there are other types of computer systems. The most common of these are known as embedded systems. An embedded system is a small computer that forms part of a large system, a large device or a machine. Its purpose is to control the device and to allow a user to interact with it. Embedded systems tend to have one or a limited number of tasks that they can perform. For example, here an example of um, a central heating system whereby everything is controlled from a little touchpad or even from your mobile phone now. Okay. Other examples would include um, engine management systems in vehicles, uh, domestic appliances such as dishwashers and TVs, mobile phones, smart watches, electrical co um, calculators, electronic calculators rather, um, GPS systems and fitness trackers. Embedded systems can be based on one of the three things shown in the table here. First of all, microcontrollers. This is a CPU in addition to some RAM and ROM and other peripherals all embedded onto one single chip. Together they carry out a specific task. A microprocessor. This is an integrated circuit which only has a CPU on the chip. There is no RAM, no ROM or peripherals these need to be added. And then finally, system on chips, SOC, this may contain a microcontroller as one of its components. They also always include a CPU, memory, inputs and outputs, ports, and secondary storage on a single microchip. An embedded system will have a specific job or several small jobs to do. Um, it's almost like a mini computer in the sense that it contains both software and hardware on the embedded system. There is a user interface, some way a person is able to sort of talk and interact with it. It usually contains some kind of input, be that analog or digital, maybe a sensor, and some form of output. They are feedback oriented systems. Just to clarify, a feedback system is one that compares its outputs to a in desired input and takes corrective action to force the output to follow the input. Burglar alarms are an excellent example. Constantly comparing the information picked up by the sensor with what has been stored. Embedded systems can contain sensor inputs, mechanical components, actuators, sort of motors, for the example, in the case of the um, in case in the case of the washing machine, there will be some kind of sensor that controls the the level of the water, and an actuator will will sort of control a valve that will shut off the water when it's reached a certain point. And there's also some kind of software. Some of the latest embedded systems use very powerful dual and quad CPUs and a variety of input and output connections, leading to a number of different applications. Now the washing machine hasn't got too difficult a task, or rather it makes it, it makes the life, the, the task of washing clothes very, very easy. Okay, it's not a difficult task at all, owing to embedded systems. All you have to do is have the clothes and leave them in the washing machine, leave, them, leave the washing machine to do its job. The, the washing machine itself has a microcontroller for controlling all the tasks, and here we've got the we've got an analog um, dial, and so obviously a, some kind of touch screen or a, a screen there which tells you what you're doing. Once you load clothes into the machine, the whole process consists of three cycles: washing, rinsing, and spinning. All three cycles are initiated by the machine itself. You just have to enter the information for hot or cold. Press the start button, and off you go. Sensors for this would include obviously water level. We need to make sure this it's not just pouring water in and then, then pours water all over the floor. Um, temperature, of course. There will also be an internal clock to control the timing of the washing machine. 
Um, actuators will control the water level and drain the machine when it is finished. Actuators being sort of motors. Embedded devices are not usually programmed by the user. Um, the program is usually done beforehand by the manufacturer. However, it is often possible to upgrade the software on an embedded device. For example, fitness trackers, such as these here, are embedded systems, but the software can be upgraded by connecting the device to a PC and installing new software. Another example might be in a car, a GPS system. Um, new roads are built all the time, so year on year, generally there is an update, and those new roads are added to your GPS device in your vehicle. So we move on to the benefits and drawbacks of using embedded systems. Benefits, they are small in size and therefore easy to fit into devices. Compared to other systems, they are relatively low cost to make. They're usually dedicated to one specific task, allowing simple interfaces and often no requirements for an operating system. They consume very little power. They can be controlled remotely, like such as the Nest um, heating system and the new Philips lighting systems, all uh, enable you to control things via your mobile phone. Um, very fast reaction to changing inputs, um, operate, operate in real time and are feedback orientated. With mass production comes reliability. Drawbacks. It can be difficult to upgrade some devices to take advantage of new technologies. Therefore, you would have to buy a new device. Troubleshooting faults um, in the device become a specialist task. Although the interface can appear to be more simple, e.g. a simple knob, in reality it can be more confusing, e changing the time on the cooker clock can require several steps. Any device that can be accessed over the internet is also open to hackers or viruses. Yes, you could get a virus in your washing machine, but you could get, I mean realistically, you could get hackers to hack into your burglar alarm system and turn the thing off um, if you're controlling it via your mobile phone. Um, due to the difficulty in upgrading and fault finding, devices are often just thrown away rather than being repaired. Um, it's very wasteful. It can lead to an increase in the throwaway society um, if devices are discarded just because they have become out of date. Here's some other examples of a motor vehicle. You can see we've got the Lamborghini here and it's got many different embedded systems all linking to, to one specific but many different systems such as the entertainment system, the GPS, um, what's controlling the airbags, um, sensors in terms of if, if you were to crash they would go off, the fuel injection system, um, ABS braking, vehicle security, traction control, exhaust emissions, all these things, all these little mini systems are inside your vehicle and controlled by an embedded system. I've linked to a little BMW um, screen here. A lot of these, these um, systems can be controlled internally via the cockpit of the car, such as the GPS, and such as things like tire pressures and various things can appear in here. Certainly the level of the fuel and this, that and the other. Okay, we mentioned it before, security systems. Again, embedded systems. Very simple, a man controlling it with a keypad. Okay, the security code is set in RAM, random access memory, and the alarm activated or deactivated using the keypad. Data from sensors is sent to the controller with check against values stored on the hard disk. Okay, and how an output can be a signal to flashlights, sound an alarm, or send a message to the home owner on his mobile phone. It can even contact police. Again, the home owner can interface with the system remotely if necessary. So there we go, we've got different sensors. Temperature, sensor, acoustic, sound. Um, the actual controller itself, a keypad interface, links to hard disk, links to um, memory, and then in the output, as we've said, the alarm itself. That is it for this particular video, and that concludes this first section in Topic 3 Hardware, Computer Architecture. Um, next time we'll move on to inputs and outputs, but I've just put this little image on screen of a microbit. This is a mini microcontroller, and it's an ideal way, a practical way, of getting used to 
receiving information from input devices, um, using them with the microcontroller and controlling output devices. Absolutely fantastic. If you can get your hands on one, I really recommend using it. Thank you very much indeed. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Please hit the notification button to, and it will let you know when the next videos are out. Hopefully, inputs and output devices very, very soon. Thank you very much indeed.